Now, the mystery of who created a 1960s pop culture time capsule uncovered in a New Plymouth cottage last week has been revealed. The McIsaac sisters, Anne and Peggy, travelled from Stratford and Auckland respectively today to be reunited with their childhood home and the wall-to-wall posters they put up as kids. Our Taranaki Whanganui reporter Robin Martin has more. When the cottage's current owner, Katie Pitwood, began removing jib in a bedroom in the Lemon Street property, staring back at her were wall-to-wall posters of the Rolling Stones, the Beatles, the Kinks and many more obscure stars of yesteryear. Realising how unique the discovery was, Miss Pitwood went public to try and track down who had put the posters up. And the answer didn't lie far away. Lorraine MacDonald used to live across the road, and her daughter lives there now. My husband said to me, um, oh, see that house in Lemon Street, he said, with all those posters, and I said, oh, I don't care. And then my daughter, who lives in our house, she rang us and said, um, That's, that was Peggy and Anne's house. So, and you made the connection? Yeah, and Barb, my sister, keeps in touch with Peggy all the time, so that's how it all happened. Ms McDonald supplied the posters. Um, I worked in a bookshop, and all at the end of each month you ripped the covers off and you know, sent away the returns, so um, brought them home and gave them to Peg. We lived here, and they lived there. She remembers that Peggy had a penchant for the Beatles. And McIsaac said she had a room out the back and the posters were Peggy's handiwork. But it's Dad that gets the credit for covering them over. Yeah, my, my dad, he jibbed the rooms, yeah. And obviously just left them behind. <laughs> Did he talk to you guys about that or? No, well he never said anything to me about it, no. Ahead of the sisters' arrival, Katie Pitwood said tracking them down had just been incredible. Oh, it's amazing, I can't wait to meet them. Um, one of the sisters had got the old photo albums out and had found some photographs of the house from when they lived there, so I'm quite excited to see those as well. Miss Pitwood said she'd had a lot of approaches for the actual posters and had found a new home for them too. Parachute Music in Auckland contacted me and said they would love to look after the posters um, and they've got um, temperature control rooms and stuff because it's a music studio um, and these studios look absolutely incredible. So they're sending someone down on the weekend to come and remove them all and take them away and preserve them. The creative director at Parachute, Chris De Jong, was wrapped to get her hands on them. When we, when we saw it first, I was like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. And then I woke up the next morning and I thought, this is crazy, but we're gonna, I think we need, to, we need to contact Katie. So I spoke to my husband, who's our CEO, and he was like, it's a daft idea, but let's do it. So then we just approached Katie and talked to her. And, um, and you know, I used to have a David Cassidy clubhouse when I was 13, under the stairs in my house, and so it took me right back. Mr Jean says Parachute will be able to display the posters for all the artists who come and go to enjoy. The timing is perfect for Katie too, who needs to get on with those renos. It's amazing. I'm just so glad someone wants to care for them because I'm a bit of a hoarder and a bit of a collector and I would love to have kept them, but I had to be a bit realistic about it and push on with the renovations because we move in in four weeks and I sort of got to the point I needed them gone. Anne says the sisters also couldn't be happier. I think that's great. Yeah, if somebody wants to hang on to them, good, yeah. You'll never see them again, will you? You know. A team from Parachute Studios will head to New Plymouth at the weekend to remove the posters. Inamutu Motihotaka Uti Ahipone, call Robin Martinaho.